Today, I want to talk to you guys about ancestral altars. Because a lot of people think ancestral altars are just basically, you know, um, candles and pictures and stuff like that. Well, contrary to that, items left behind by the dead can be used as means to contact them. As you see this item here. This item here is a piano. And this item here has a picture of someone who was once the owner. As you can see in the back here, you can you kind of see an item here which was left behind by an elderly person, a very great person. Yes, I'm here in Kansas City, Missouri. The message I want to bring to you today is that you have to have respect for the dead. You have to not only have respect for the dead, but maintain what they leave behind. If you choose to take on such tasks, you must know how to honor or perform adoration. You know, you can't just come here and then basically take their stuff and throw it out. This is how you bring on destruction. You know, because their presence, what belonged to them, still belongs to them after death. So if you want to make an offering, as an altar, you can leave something here, fruit, vegetable, whatsoever. You can always do that. That's not a problem. Whatever they desire from you, not what you want to give them. You know, you know. again, you know, if you go to my country, you'll see that there's items outside. You know, you'll see items are left by, you know, a pack like, like steel. You know what I'm saying? Scrap metal. And, you know, people be wondering, you know, and Americans would be wondering, what the fuck is that? Scrap metal? Well, that's for Ogu. You know what I'm saying? That's for the God of War. Metal. You know what I mean? So let's, let's move out of this thing of pictures, pictures, pictures. You know, the items left behind, whether it's even a, you know, a, a bunk or something like that, or whatever, you know, I don't even know what they call it in English. Let's just say a treasure chest. If it's a chest whatsoever, it still has the remnants of their energy on there. You know, so when we harbor things that belong to those who once lived, we still maintain a contact with them, but we must know how to connect with those forces. Now, I want to move into this discussion about ancestral veneration and things of this, things of this nature. Is that we have to understand, now talking about life, when you talk about in tranquil spirits or you know, this and that, we see this played out in our life daily. You know, we can become in tranquil spirits or we become benevolent spirits. You know, uh, where we are given chances in life to do what's right and we have and we have the ability or the choice to do what's wrong there's many people who have died with cancer at one point in their life you know or excuse me there's many people who have been who have had cancer and if you look at these people's lifestyle who have survived cancer you will see that these people made a change in the way they lived whether it was eating the way they interact with people this is to show us that we have the ability to change the direction of our lives. You know, we, we, there's some people that say there's so, there, we only get so much chances until we get no more chances. Because those who have, who have survived cancer, you see that these people, you see that these people, they change their life around. And those who uh, end up with having cancer again, usually are people who went back to the lifestyle which that which brought them to that position in the first place, you know. So with that said, I leave this message for you guys to reflect on. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.